Good evening and welcome to our Monday Sir Thursday service. We're glad you can join us this day of Holy Week. You can see our altar has been stripped in preparation for our Good Friday service tomorrow night. We have one candle lit and this is to remind us that Christ's light is still with us, has not left us, and it's also the candle that we use in our confirmation class. Every class we light this candle. So this is a reminder that even though we're apart, not teaching one another, our class still remains very important to me. And I look forward to the day when we can be back together again. Also, this Easter Sunday, we will be having virtual communion. I will ask each one of you to bring uh, bread and wine or juice. Have them at home with you while we can, so we can commune together. Let us worship God. President Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration reconciled with God and with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts, and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture this evening comes from the Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 17, and then verses 31 through 35. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So that he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. 
After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize what now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then the Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified as God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Here ends our scripture reading for this Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday draws its name from Christ's concluding pronouncement. I give you a new commandment. Mandatum novum, says the Latin Vulgate, that you shall love one another. So the church gave the day its name from the word that echoes as the shadows of Good Friday begin to fall. Mandate, as I have loved you, love one another. And we are told what this is about. It's about being loved by Jesus. Having loved his own, he loved them to the end, to the completion, to the final, it is finished problem. The truthful declaration that Jesus loves his disciples has not been disclosed until now. But here at supper, with the arrival and last of his hour, the time has come for such disclosures. In this upper room, Jesus will unveil several truths to his friends. His love is the first. Even in a room full of disciples, the light of the world will be shining in darkness. Well, why is that? What's the theme here of disloyalty? Think about Judas's betrayal and Peter's denial. Jesus knows this. Our text is emphatic about what Jesus knows and what the disciples don't know. Before he rises to wash their feet, we are told of four things that he knows. He knows the time. It's time for him to die. He knows what is in his hands, all things. He knows that he came from God, and he knows that he is going to God. Such knowing is the ground. It's, it's the basis, the solid rock of loving. Trusting that origin, origins, you know, the past and destinations, the future, are in God's hands. One stands upon the present hour as, as on a solidly held bridge, free to hold all things with love, including death and the anxiousness 
all around us. Without a word, he rises and moves among them with, in this embodied parable. The washing of feet is really a pre-enactment of his death. He lays his robe aside just as he lays aside his life. He would be crucified without that robe. So here on the eve of his death, he lays aside his robe, stoops among his stunned disciples and washes their feet. Jesus here would have been the host and the disciples, the guests. Now washing the feet of the guests would have been a job delegated to a Gentile slave by those. Not even Jewish slave would be expected to wash feet. The feet of travelers in ancient Palestine would have been shod in sandals and thus filthy from traveling on those dirt roads. Jesus himself tells us that the first shall be last. And in the washing of the feet, he shows his willingness to take on the work of the last and of the least. Now it's one thing to having an unknown and nobody wash your feet. That's it's really impersonal. It's quite another having your teacher and mentor and Lord wash your feet. We can feel them squirming. Their embarrassment is obvious, and it's enacted out by Peter. See, the indignity of the for the disciples resides in their teacher's initiative to cleanse for them what they would prefer almost anyone else to cleanse. No wonder Peter resists. He has signed up to follow Jesus, not to have the unpleasantness down at the foot of his life exposed and then handed to him. Is Peter or any of the other disciples willing to do this? The refusal of his feet to Jesus is equivalent to his unthinking belief that he is ready to follow and lay down his life for Jesus. There is the parallel to Jesus' response to both of these exclamations. Jesus says, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter cannot follow on such faulty feet. Only later after the cleansing of his failures and the death in his behalf and a forgiveness by resurrection. No, no thank you, says Peter. I can take care of these. I can wash these myself. Don't humble yourself to me. That makes me uncomfortable. You shall never wash my feet. I recall what Paul says in Philippians. Paul writes, Christ Jesus, who thought, both who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant. And not just any servant, but the lowest of the low, the most insignificant among all the insignificants. Jesus answered, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. On hearing that, Peter begs then to be scrubbed all over. But that's been taken care of, Jesus said. Your baptism will hold. Jesus' focus is not on forgiveness, but freedom. You are clean. Clean for what? Well, for the new mandate at last. To his friends with these freshly scrubbed feet, Jesus back into his place, puts back his robe and says, Do what I have done to you. I'll give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should. You also should love one another. Now most of us would enter that room of this text thinking to be good disciples, but still wearing a title. And that title is one of judge. We're long accustomed to peering down from the high bench, from our lofty and significant perch, and pronouncing innocent or guilt, pardon or punishment on others and on ourselves, and often with righteous intent. But here at this table room with Christ, we are disarmed. We are not judged at all, but held 
and bathe in love. We might protest, our anxieties will protest, but our gracious host lays a finger to our lips. Then we are brought near to our sisters and our brothers, all cleansed by this same grace, and then we see the love that has served us, and we move to embrace them. We emerge from such an encounter cleansed, and we've given up that title of judge. We are free not to do this, of course. Between the foot washing and the new commandment, Judas excuses himself and hurries out of the room into the night. So the gift without the mandate is useless. John's Gospel reminds us that on the table is a towel, a community founded by cleansing love has no other purpose for being and will be known by no other evidence. Love is shaped like a cross, downward for us and outward through us. As it turns out, this new commandment itself is really the whole gospel story. It traces two great, mo great moments of grace, movements of grace. As I have loved you, you should love one another. And that makes the sign of the cross. Amen. Please join me for some music. This is called A New Commandment.
Let us pray together. And as I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond. Hear our prayer. Loving, listening God, ever attentive to the voices of those in need, we call upon on your name so that we might live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church that bears Christ's name and the world that the world may know we are his disciples by the love that we have for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and all persons in positions of authority, that their lives may be marked by Christ-like service and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are oppressed and living in captivity, that they may escape from evil and death to find the land of freedom you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For health care workers, essential workers, and for all those who risk their own health and share their time so that others can see the love that they have for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry and thirsty this day, and for those who have too much, that we may learn to share your generous gifts, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are dealing with loss or facing death, that the presence of Christ may bless and keep them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Answer, answer us in this day of trouble, O God so that we may give thanks for all your goodness to us, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Our final piece of music tonight is a song called Crown. Yeah. 